So before I talk about Immaculate, can I just say that this looks like it is shaping up to be maybe one of the best years of horror movies that we have had in a long time, at least in the mainstream. Because I was thinking about this. Like, I wasn't even going to see Immaculate. I wanted to see Late Night with the Devil. But my theater wasn't playing that, so I saw Immaculate instead. But still, both of those horror movies coming out right now. We have Alien Romulus, which looks like it's taken Alien back to its horror roots. There's Terrifier 3 coming out this year. There is uh, that movie Long Legs. I have no idea what's going on with that. Nicolas Cage is in it. That looks awesome. We have Robert Eggers making a Nosferatu remake. We have uh, the third movie in Ty West, uh, X, Maxine, or uh, X, Pearl, and then Maxine. That comes out this year. Uh, I know I'm missing more. I think I saw a trailer for that movie, Abigail, which looks more like a horror comedy, but Melissa Barrera is in it, so, you know, I might go see it for that reason. But besides that, I'm sitting here thinking about how crazy it is, just the amount of horror movies that we're getting, and I know I'm missing more. I know there's other big ones coming out this year, too. I, dude, my fingers are crossed. This might be one of the best years of horror in the mainstream for a while. But Immaculate is a movie that I heard a little bit about. It stars Sydney Sweeney, and I know she's been kind of all over recently. I've never heard of Sydney Sweeney before the year 2023, and now all of a sudden she's just been everywhere. And I have to be honest, I have never watched anything with Sydney Sweeney in it, okay? I might have done a few Google searches here and there for research. But I've never actually watched any movie that she was in until now. This is the first movie I've seen her act in. And I, you know, I got to admit, I'm on board. I'm on board. She was fantastic in this movie. Um, and I think that this movie is carried so heavily by her and so heavily by her performance. There's kind of a lot of characters in the movie, but most of them are background characters, but everything is through this character's perspective and the things that she's going through, and the things that she is going through in this movie are incredibly psychologically damaging, not to mention the physical aspect of things that she has to do throughout the film, and all of it she sells 100%. I've never seen her act before, I've never seen her in any other movie, but this this movie, it made me a fan. All right, I'm on board, I get it now, I understand I'm on board. Now, I don't want to say too much about this movie because it is one of those films where it's kind of best to go into it knowing nothing, which I didn't, which was a great experience. And it's something that I wish I could experience more often. Sometimes I try to either avoid trailers or I watch maybe only the first trailer and I cut it out after that. But Immaculate is something that I really had no idea. I knew that she played a nun. That was about it. So the general premise is that she does play a nun. She plays a very wholesome, good, pure girl that has devoted her entire life to God that travels to Italy, not knowing the language very well, and joins a convent of nuns and takes her final vows. And basically, it's kind of this place where uh, they take care of a lot of sickly people. You know, they devote themselves to God. They give up the material pleasures and, you know, that they basically just live there being nuns, right? And she's very excited to do so. But as soon as she gets there, and actually the opening scene of the movie is super creepy to begin with, but then it cuts to her, she goes there, and things are just kind of not what they seem. And it's one of those kind of movies where there is some kind of creepy mystery happening in the background, strange things are happening. At first it seems like, well, maybe that was just a weird moment, or somebody's walking around at night, yada yada. But then things get progressively creepier and creepier and weirder and stranger. And I think this is pretty much well known about the plot, so this isn't a spoiler. But at one point, Sydney Sweeney's character gets pregnant and she never lays with a man. So virgin pregnancy, pretty big deal when it comes to Catholicism and the Catholic Church and all that. Now the hows and why that she's pregnant and what exactly is happening, all of that is eventually unfolded throughout the course of the plot, so I won't describe that to you. But Sydney Sweeney's performance is what captivated me most about this movie, as well as the way that it's shot, particularly the first two-thirds of the movie. The final act I have the most amount of issues with, but for the first two acts of the film, it very much is, it looks like, I don't know for sure, I don't know who the director is, but it looks like... He was drawing a lot of inspiration from old school, like 70s horror films that kind of deal around similar subject matter, particularly The Omen and Rosemary's Baby. I think Rosemary's Baby actually came out in the 60s, but obviously those two have a very heavy connection here. There's even a shot where a character falls off of a rooftop and 
it, it just reminded me of the omen, but not in a cheesy way, not in like a copycat kind of way, not in a pale imitation kind of way, but I feel like they really understood that kind of horror and the way to set it up and the way to film it. Where things feel very grounded, very realistic, and these strange, weird cult things are happening. And look, I'm not a religious person, all right? I'm not super anti-religious, but I'm not a religious person. Um, But a lot of these things tend to get very, very creepy just kind of in general. Just this sort of like collective idea of how people operate and worship things and these kind of rituals and stuff. And it's very easy to kind of twist that on its head and turn it into something horrific, which this movie does, especially with, uh, with Sydney Sweeney's character. She doesn't speak the language. People are saying things around her that she doesn't understand. People are doing things that she doesn't understand. People are mysteriously disappearing. Obviously she randomly gets pregnant. All of these creepy things are happening. And the way that the movie is filmed is very, at least in the first two acts, is very slow paced. We have long lingering shots. We have very good cinematography. It builds up the tension and builds up the suspense very well. Like I said, it kind of reminded me of a throwback to like a 70s slower burn sort of horror movie. But then the third act just kind of goes crazy. And that's going to be the make or break. I think depending on whether or not you're going to really like this movie or really not like this movie. I think... Uh, I I enjoyed it enough to where the third act I was on board for and I was kind of going with it, even though I recognized the first two acts of the movie were better for me. Uh, but there still is a lot of great stuff that's happening here. And even though it is mostly a slow burn horror movie, there are some extremely graphic and gory sequences that happen here. And some of them come out of nowhere. And that's kind of the best way to do it at times where you draw the audience in and you make it feel grounded and realistic. And then you just have this extreme body horror moment happen. And it just makes you think like, what the hell is going on? And I think a lot of times it was very, very effective the way that they did it, where you would have these long extended sequences that are more slow, suspense, creeping through the dark, yada, yada. And then you would have moments where people are getting their face stomped in and it looks awesome. But a lot of it is psychological. It's a, it's a lot of her character trying to, because she actually is a very genuine, good, pure person, right? And she wants to be devoted to God and she wants to do the right thing. But then it's like everybody else has this weird, twisted subversion of this uh, belief and like what they want and then viewing her as this sort of, sort of a Virgin Mary-like figure as time goes on. And she tries to figure out a way to escape the situation. And obviously, you know, they do the kind of the trope where it's like, well, we don't really want you to leave because we want you to be safe. And then, you know, people start acting out uh, and then people start di- disappearing, like I said, and uh, or getting maimed or something really bad happens to them. And so she's slowly figuring this out, but she's got nobody on her side. And that's the thing that makes it uh, makes the tension work so well is because she feels so isolated. It's like, who does she talk to? Who does she confide in? And you're in this situation where you're supposed to be able to confide in God because you're in this, you know, convent, like everybody around you is religious. Like you should be able to open up and talk, you know, there's confession booth scenes and stuff, but it gets to a point where it's like, I I can't trust anybody. I don't know who to talk to. I don't know what's going on with me. There's a really effective sequence that actually is in the third act where they are going through sort of this underground cavernous area with only a flashlight as the light. And it's done very effectively. It's not done poorly where it's like, oh, I can't see anything going on. They really utilize the light and dark of this scene very well with the way that it's filmed because... Uh, she's got the flashlight, but she doesn't want anybody else that she, to know that she's down there. So she keeps turning it off, trying to navigate the corridors. There are times where she turns the flashlight on and you see something really fucked up behind her that she doesn't notice yet. Um, my cat's inspecting my books down there. What's up? Say hi to Dracula. And she has some incredibly emotional moments that I could imagine are just really, really hard to perform as an actor, particularly the final sequence, which I think that if you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, I couldn't imagine doing very many takes of that because she goes to some extreme places in the final sequence where it's like, I I mean, I I don't even know how you would ask an actor to do that multiple times. You know what I mean? Basically what I'm saying without spoilers is that this movie surprised me. Uh, As a horror fan, uh, you know, I love little gems like this that I wasn't expecting to like as much as I did. As somebody that's seen Sydney Sweeney all over social media and, you know, in all these interviews and stuff lately and all these memes, uh, 
it's nice to actually get to see her act and realize that, okay, she's legit, like really, really legit. Um, and I thought she was fantastic in this movie. If you're wondering what kind of horror this is, like I said, it's mostly suspense and build up. There are some jump scares, some very, very effective ones, but I don't think they're overdone. I think most of the horror is a very slow burn kind of thing. It's more atmospheric until you get to the final act where some really nasty shit happens and it can get a little over the top and a little weird. But it's just going to depend on your sensibilities. Like, if you're on board for the plot, all right, fine. The final act will work. But it could take some people out of it, depending on how you feel about it. So that's kind of what I think. If you guys want to check it out, I'd say, hey, if you're looking for a horror movie in the theater right now that you're going to have some fun with, it's only 90 minutes. You're not going to be there for long. Some great acting, great atmosphere. I'd say check it out. So I'm going to have spoilers a little bit just so I can talk about the ending and talk about what happens in the third act and my confliction on it. Although overall, I do really, really enjoy the movie. So this is spoilers now. So obviously she gets forcibly impregnated, right? And it's not a miracle. It's because they are performing these experiments to, if I, I believe if I understood the plot correctly, to kind of bring back um, Jesus in a way through like DNA, like they have one of the nails or they believe they have one of the nails that Jesus was crucified with and they found like very trace amounts of DNA DNA on it. And one of the priests used to be a biologist that quit in order to kind of join this convent, but also because he was kind of kicked out because of his weird experience. Basically, basically what you have is a mad scientist in the setting of this religious facility. But what I liked about this was that the movie was not supernatural per se. So it, it kind of put a twist on the whole Rosemary's Baby sort of thing because what you imagine is that she's pregnant with like the Antichrist or something. And there's even like writing on the wall, like the devil will deceive and this and that. And like, you know, this weird cult ritual stuff. So you think it's going to be like this cult ritual where they're like bringing Satan back into the world or something like that. But really, it's just this like fucked up body horror genetic experiment. So that's kind of the thing where it's like, well, are you on board with that concept or are you not? I'm on board with the concept. I like that. You know, basically they infected her and like with this weird DNA shit and like forcibly impregnated her. Like, you know, I'm on board for that. That sounds like a good time. The thing I wasn't so on board for was the actor that played the main priest biologist guy. I don't want to say anything bad about the actor because I, I don't think I recognize him from anything else, but he did feel a little too over the top at the end. And I know the concept is over the top, but he kind of, I don't know if it was overacting or just maybe he was too much of like a villain, but the whole movie felt very grounded and creepy and atmospheric, but he very much felt like a villain. Like I am a bad guy towards the end. And it was a little bit too much, a little bit too over the top. I don't know if it was the director's choice to do that. I don't know if it was like just the actor in particular, but something about it kind of bothered me. Like he was a little bit too much of like a villain rather than, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like it wasn't subtle. It wasn't subtle whatsoever. He was like, here is my evil plan. And this is what, I, even though he's doing it for what he believes is good, but I don't know if anybody understands what I'm saying. I felt like it was a little too over the top. That's basically it. And I love her various methods of escape. Like at first that she, you know, is trying to do things the right way. She wants to go see a real doctor. They won't take her. Uh, I, I called it right away in the theater, but it's okay. It doesn't bother me that I called it. But there's a scene where uh, she refuses to kill a chicken. Like she's like, I can't cut its head off. Oh, I can't do that. It's too, it's too gross. But then there's a scene where she's like covered in blood and it looks like, you know, she's giving birth early. So they have to take her out to go see a real doctor because the doc, the church doctor's not around at the time. And I knew her being covered in blood. I'm like, oh, she actually, she killed the chicken and, you know, covered herself in blood to escape. Uh, great plan. But I, it's that kind of stuff that keeps coming up where it's like nobody's on her team. Nobody's got her back. So she has to keep delving into darker and darker things to escape. Eventually, she winds up murdering people like to just get out of there. You know, imagine you're like nine months pregnant. Everyone is fucking creepy. You realize that this priest has these weird genetic experiments with like fetuses and jars and shit. It's like, I, I got to get out of here no matter what. So she just starts like killing people to get out of there. And it's great to see that progression of her character going into those darker and darker places where she starts out being so incredibly wholesome. And the final sequence is what people will talk about a lot. There is this long, like three minute long 
shot, one take of Sydney Sweeney, uh, her character at the very end where she gives birth. But they do a creative artistic decision that will work for some people and not work for others. I thought it was very well done. And given the fact that we realize that this movie is not about anything supernatural, but instead about something biological, I didn't need to see the fetus. Because I think that's the thing that's going to bother people is that, like, it's built up like maybe this is the Antichrist or something. But it's really not. It's just, like, fucked up genetics. It's fucked up, you know, they forcibly impregnated her, right? Uh, But then you could also say, like, well, uh, maybe she shouldn't have killed the fetus because, you know, that's a potential for life or whatever. Maybe it's the second coming of Christ. But after going through what she goes through, I don't blame her at all. I don't blame her at all. I don't know what that says about me. I'm just looking at it from the headspace of the character and all the things that she had to do and how this thing is a curse inside of her or viewed as if it's a curse or viewed as if it comes from a place of evil. I don't blame her at all. There's a long extended sequence of her giving birth, uh, not seeing it, but just seeing her face and her reaction. And after she does... (laughs) She grabs a fucking rock in one full shot and smashes the fetus into pieces. And from a horror movie standpoint, maybe in real, if this was real life, you know, maybe I I would be like, well, should, I mean, the the baby is kind of innocent, right? But in this movie, she deserves to smash that fucking kid. (laughs) That's what I think. And she does. And she does. And it was glorious. Anyways, I really like the movie. Uh, Go check it out. Obviously, I spoiled it, but I warned you of spoilers. Anyways, like, comment, guys. Tell me what you thought about it if you saw it. I'll talk to you later.